Hi there, my name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter, and today I'm going to be watercoloring a coastal scene. I'm going to be doing this using a stamp, and that's because this is going to be for a greeting card. However, if you're an artist and you saw the title of this and wanted to see how to paint this sky, you can certainly stick around because it's a really interesting way to let the paint move on the paper. So here I'm stamping using the Misty tool and I've blocked off that little piece at the bottom because I wanted to be able to create my own rocks at the very bottom. If you're drawing your own little lighthouse, you can certainly do that and create your own scene this way. But I'm going to paint a little bit of lemon yellow right around the place where the light comes out of my lighthouse because that's the area where I want it to be, this kind of nice bright light yellow. And then I'm going to take some water all the way around the outside edges and just let that paint carry itself out into the water. And then I'm going to take some permanent yellow deep and drop in a little bit more right around the light lighthouse just because I want to create some emphasis. And then I want to create some clouds. Like if you've ever seen clouds, sometimes they look like they're they've got color on the bottom. So I'm almost making scoop shapes. So <laughs> I'm not sure how to explain it any more than that, but I'm trying to paint paint them so that it looks like there's highlights on the bottoms of the clouds and then let that yellow part just dry. I don't want anything to mix into it too much quite yet. So I'm going to work on the bottom section instead. And that's what my, my technique for myself is to try to distract myself with something else so that I don't mess with an area that I want to stay dry. I will have some accidents in here that I'll show you that I do and uh, how I recovered from that. But I want to put a couple different colors down here. And I'm going to add a little bit of, that was uh, quinacridone burnt orange at first, and now I'm going to add some sepia right along the top edge. And I'm letting it be rough so that it looks like it's rough and rocky. You could even put grasses in there. Lots of different ways you can create a scene like this. And now that I have that top edge defined, I'm going to add just a couple more browns. Then I'm going to go back in with a little more of the quinacridone burnt orange, a little bit more sepia. Just let those colors mix on the paper. That tends to be how I work for the most part. There's sometimes when I mix in the palette, but a lot of times I just love how it moves on Arches cold pressed paper. And I love it how it does it even more on rough paper, but I do tend to use the cold press here on YouTube videos because that's what a lot of people like. The, the amount of texture in the rough paper scares some folks, but I encourage you to give it a shot sometime. So I'm going to use transparent pearl orange to paint my solid areas, my solid stripes. And then I'm going to fill my brush with more pigment so that I have heavier color on one side. So that's going to give me a little bit of the dimension across here. And just sort of tap it into the wet paint and let the paper carry the color. Let the, the paper and the water together are going to make little channels across there that's going to carry all that pigment. I try not to get puddly color and, and puddly amounts of water because puddling tends to create blooms and I don't like blooms. I like being in a little more control. If I want to have a bloom, I want to create it specifically. So here, one of the things you might start watching and keep an eye on is that now that red is bleeding into, that transparent pearl orange is bleeding into my ground at the bottom. So we are going to have to fix that because again, I did something without waiting. I should have started in the middle stripes. You know, I always learn these things after I do them the first time. So I decided to leave that in the video so you can see how I fix it later on. But it's getting to be a worse mess. The more it dries and the more that color moves, it's just creating a little blob. But fortunately, that's going to be a section of rocks. And you can do all kinds of things when you've got rocks in the ground. You can make a lot, a lot of red rocks. You can add more dark over top of that and we'll start messing with that at the end because I want to wait till that's really dry and I don't have to separate the two colors anymore. I'll move on to the roof here on the little house and I'm just going to use some more of that uh, burnt orange, the quinacrium burnt orange for that with a little bit of sepia. This palette, uh, there will be more information about that coming soon but it is my kind of my favorite colors are in this palette but the uh, the whole there's a video coming about that and a dot card and everything these are daniel smith paints by the way in case i haven't mentioned that yet 
I just want to add a little bit more of that red at the bottom because I wanted to make sure I, I try to get my stripes looking a little more even. So I'm trying to pull in enough color that they all look about the same depth of color. Touching them up just a little bit. And now that all that's done, I'm going to work on my sky. And I'm going to use Carbazole Violet next. It's a very strong, very dark purple. You can see my first blob of it is quite dark, but I'm going to use a lot of water to water that down and pull the color around. I don't want my sky to be solid colors. I just want to have a really light feeling of those watercolored skies that you see when it actually looks like God painted watercolor out there in the sky. And so I'm using just a tinge of the paint and a lot of water on my brush to move that around. And I, at the time that I was painting this, I just knew I wanted to have a little bit of color more than the yellow. And I wasn't really sure how far I was gonna go. You could certainly stop with just this amount and not go as far as I'm going to. But some of those areas, you can see I've left some white. I did a little bit of dry brush work there and I'm painting a little bit of darker color behind it to emphasize that. So I'm gonna drop in a little bit of stronger purple here and there. And there are some areas where on, at the edge of that water that I've put down, it started looking like it was gonna give me a hard edge. So I just dabbed it off with a little piece of paper towel. And now I wanted to add a little bit more contrast, a little bit more color, because I was feeling bold, because I liked where I was going so far. And I was prepared to just dab all this off with a paper towel. But I decided, no, I kind of liked the amount of color I was The only area I ended up dabbing any color off of was where the, the water ended at the bottom. I didn't want to have hard edges there, so I dabbed a little bit of that off so it wouldn't puddle there and, and give me any kind of weird edges. And I'm trying to continue that same purple cloud behind my lighthouse. When you've got an object in front of something in the background, you don't want the background to look like it suddenly changes when it passes through that lighthouse. So you want to try to keep the, the cloud the same color or the same shape or a continuing shape through both on, on both sides of it. And that's what I'm trying to do there. Now I got bold. I decided to add one more color. This is Thalo Blue Red Shade. And I'm just pulling that color around again. I wanted it really light. I didn't want to go crazy with it. And at the bottom I wanted it to look like there was this cascade of kind of white clouds maybe right at the horizon. And as I was looking at this, I was also thinking that I've created maybe a scene that's not realistic because a lighthouse was supposed to be by the water and I have no water in my scene. So now what do I do? Well, I've got my line of clouds that, that's built now from painting my sky. And since I'm messing with my phthalo blue again, why don't I just put some water in there? So I gave myself a horizon line and originally intended on maybe putting some waves out here so you'll see me painting some arcs and that sort of thing. And I realized that would make it look like those waves might be crashing in an, in an odd way. I wasn't really sure how this was going to look as a scene. So I went back and forth with it with just barely any pigment and then water on my brush. You see I haven't adapted anything, haven't changed anything. There's only water coming out of my brush that's softening all of that. But giving it that texture adds some interest down there at the bottom as well as softens any weird hard edges that started looking too much like waves. So now I've got a little more of a scene, a little happier with where it's headed. And now it's time to fix the rocks at the bottom that I messed up. So I'm going to go back in with some dark sepia, some heavily pigmented sepia with not much water in it to try to add some color in here. And there are a couple different ways you can go about this. You can add more red to other portions of the ground to compensate for the red that bled in there, or you can add a little more brown until it starts covering the red that bled. <laughs> There's, you can use a combination of the two. I'm gonna use a combination of just adding more color, more strength to this. It's also gonna anchor my painting a little bit more. It's gonna make it look nicer on the card eventually, but I'm just tapping color in again the same kind of way as I had done before but it's becoming more intense because it's another layer it's another glaze over top of the color that had already been here so now I'm going to add a little bit more detail into just a few areas on the roof of both of the buildings and a little bit of a shadow on one side of that little section at the top of the lighthouse 
Got to give some color to the windows, of course. They could go dark or they could go light. Either way works. And then I realized I needed a little bit of shading potentially in the white stripes. So I'm painting a little bit of the, the gray or the black on one side and then just letting my brush pull them up. Not, not much color at all because if <laughs> you could really risk going black with it, so be gentle. And then I thought maybe I should paint in the doors. I'm just going to add a little bit of color into them as well. Now the final thing that I wanted to fix was this area right here didn't look like it was matching the same kind of purple. So I added another little swoosh of that on top and trying to keep it soft and yet enough pigment that that cloud looks like it continues from one side to the other. And there we go. All finished and placed onto a card. I just glued it onto a heavy card base because with watercolor paper, paper, you need to do a good heavy card base and there's a nice close-up of it. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did, click the like button down below. I always appreciate that to know what kind of videos you want You can you click on my face to subscribe. There's two more videos here. One is actually a paint along of a lighthouse, if you want to check that out. And there's a watercolor class you may also be interested in if you want to hear more about watercolor and the way that I paint. And I will talk to you guys later. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.